Hi, my name is Peter Guy from Peter Guy Racing Engines. Had a customer call me from New Zealand, my home country, and uh, has a 69 Mustang with a 351 Windsor, and he wanted to do an upgrade. So we settled on a 448 inch Ford Windsor to run on pump gas. The motor I wanted to build for him has to work with an automatic transmission. I've always wanted to build what I call a catalog motor. It's tough to find all the parts and pieces from all the different manufacturers. So I decided to buy everything from one place, which was Summit Racing. So this motor and every component in it came from Summit. We start off with a dart block with an eagle crank. The crankshaft in this motor, uh, we set all the clearances in it. The clearances for this motor, which has a Ford Cleveland style main bearing, two and three quarter to three to one on the mains for a street strip motor and about two and a half to 275 thou clearance on the rods. Even though everything's bought for the motor, you must check fit everything. You check fit the clearances, some of these cranks being a stroker crank and depending on the rod combination, they can have interference problems with the bottom of the bore, the side of the block. There's a lot of places there. So just dry fit the motor, put all the pieces in, rotate it around, and take a die grinder and break all the edges of any machine surfaces and clearance anywhere where you think it might get close. Uh, use a micrometer, an outside mic, and a dial ball gauge. You could use an inside mic, but you get a lot of difference in feel. So with a dial ball gauge, measure the crank, take the uh, micrometer, set it up in a soft jaw vise, Set your dial ball gauge to zero and then measure the inside dimension of the bearings bolted and torqued up in either block or the crank. And whatever the difference is on the undersize, that is your clearance. So you can get it down to the tenth of a foul. When I put the rotating assembly together, I like to lay out all the parts, lay all the pistons out. Um, a lot of these motors have to have a left and a right piston. Um, so Make sure you have them all laid out, numbered one through eight. Lay all your rods out, your bearings out. Get everything ready to go. With the spiral locks, there's 32 spiral locks, four per piston. Count out four, put four with each piston, assembly. And when I start off, I start off with putting the spiral locks in, two spiral locks in one side on all the pistons, and then with the piston rod and a piston vise, making sure you get the rod uh, orientated correctly, front and rear. Then put the second two in. By counting four out and having them all laid out, if you end up with one left over, you've only got one on one side. When assembling these motors, the fasteners that are used, the torque values are different from one manufacturer to another. We're using the stock bolts that come from Dart or whether you're using ARP fasteners. They will all have a torque specification and it will differ depending on the assembly lube you use, whether it's oil, whether it's a molly, or whether it's a assembly lube. When you're gapping the rings, I buy file fit rings. The piston gap, the ring gap on the piston is essential to get the cylinder sealed up. I just hang one rod on a piston and use that to square the piston and the bore. You can buy a piston square tool. Then I just take a, uh, in this case, a Moroso ring grinder, which is also available from Summit, and uh, file fit the rings. Once you check the clearances on it, just take a small diamond stone and just break all the edges, make sure you've got no sharp edges. Clearances on this particular motor were 20 thou on the top ring and 18 on the second used to be we closed the second ring way up 20 years ago. Um, it's come to find out that pressure will build between the first and second ring and if you can't push it out past the second ring it'll actually lift the ring off the bottom of the ring bore. It's the top ring pushing down against the piston which seals as importantly as pushing against the bore so you don't want to lift that off its seat. When putting the pistons on the rings, 
Um, this particular piston has an oil spacer. Because the wrist pin is so far up, it's actually into the oil ring. So you put the oil groove spacer in, assemble the oil rings, and then you have a top ring and a second ring. They're different, the chamfers are different on them, then the type of material is different. So make sure, once again, that you keep the track of that, and make sure you get them in the right way. Rotate the ring gaps 180 out from each other, so that the two gaps don't line up. For all assembly on this motor, we've used Royal Purple Assembly Lube. Um, nice product, uh, been using it for years, had no failures for initial fire up, so make sure you put a liberal coat around your wrist pins, around the bearings, any part that's going to have an initial fire up uh, contact. Before assembling the piston and the bore, once again, a little bit of raw purple on the bottom. Put the piston in the piston groove. Before restoring the piston, lubricate the bearing. A little bit more raw purple on the crankshaft. Uh, if you don't have a piston ring tool, piston sleeve, I suggest you get one. They're only about 20 bucks. It allows you to push the piston into a tapered sleeve. Then you insert the rod in the block and just with a little gentle pressure with your fist you can just push the piston into the bore. Torquing the motor once again just a matter of getting a high quality torque wrench. The torque on these rods were 65 foot pounds. Um, use some ARP molly lube under the head of the bolt as well as the threads just to make sure that they don't gall and torque them up. Now would be a good time just to double check all your clearance issues. Um, just rotate the motor over when you've got all the pistons in. Just take a look at everywhere where the rod comes close, where the rod comes close to the oil pan. Um, and just, just have a quick rotate and a quick visual as each of the rotating parts pass the block. Okay, once you have the motor short blocked, we get to the cam installation. Um, a liberal dosing around the bearings of uh, Royal Purple. Slide the camshaft in. There's not much to that. It should slow, slide in freely. It should spin freely. Set up your dial indicators. You need to find top dead center where the piston is at its utmost uh, top point. And then you need another dial indicator or the same indicator set up to find a lift the rise of normally 50 thou gear chain assembly. When you're installing this you want to make sure that you have the correct end clearance for the Torrington bearing if you are using a Torrington. This particular motor does run a needle bearing so uh, we set that clearance up to 6 thou. Um, this motor had a 114 degree camshaft. Um, manufacturer's installation wanted it set in at 110. It actually went in at 109.5. It's close enough. This particular motor is painted black. I use brass freeze plugs on everything I do because I do not want to change them at some other day. They're impossible to do in the car. I like to put the brass freeze plugs in with a little bit of gasket cinch around them. And if you find a heavy half inch socket that's just a little bit smaller with an extension and just drive them home until they're flush with the block. I think it looks good with the brass on the black motor. Install all your galley plugs so when you're doing all the water system and blocking up all the holes, do the expansion plugs and any screw-in plugs so you know that when you're done with that process it's all finished. The oil pump, you have a brand new oil pump. This is a gear rotor pump being a Ford. Main thing you have to do with these is oil prime them. If they're dry they will not pick up oil. You don't want to run the motor with the oil pump dry trying to get oil pressure. So go ahead, fill it up a little bit of uh, raw purple, a little bit of heavy oil and just rotate the, mo the oil pump over by hand. You'll start to hear it clicking and you'll start to feel it starting to pump. Once you've got that all done, assemble that on the dry assemble it on the motor and once again check clearances. Everything about doing these motors is clearancing. You've got crankshafts with extra counterweights, you've got stroker cranks and the oil pump manufacturer 
can't build an oil pump to suit every application. So just go ahead, double check the throws of the crank, the counterweights, double check the block, just, just everywhere you think it's coming close. Rotate the rods around and make sure that the first time it fires up it doesn't knock the oil pump off the motor. Okay, on the oil pump pickup, I use a thin coat of gasket cinch, it's a contact adhesive. Put a small coating on the oil pump and a thin coating on the gasket, let them dry, it takes about a minute, minute and a half depending on the temperature. And once you touch them together that'll hold that gasket in place, you won't have to worry about the thing sliding around or ripping the gasket. The pickup goes on, Loctite the bolts, red Loctite. You do not want the oil pump pickup vibrating off as you're driving down the freeway. Quite catastrophic. Once the pickup's on, do the same process. Go through, rotate the crank, and just make sure that you have no issues getting close to the pickup. You've got to check the clearance from the bottom of the pan to the pickup. You want a minimum of a quarter inch to about three eighths of an inch. We have the high volume oil pumps, you'll actually end up sucking a hole. If it's too close to the pan, the oil won't be able to flow into the pickup and it will actually suck a hole and cavitate. So giving yourself a little extra clearance there and making sure you have that clearance will help the oil get in to the pickup. Everything we talk about on these motors as far as blueprinting is about flowing. It's about clearancing to allow for expansion. If you set your rod bearings up to two and three quarter thou, or 2.75, it doesn't matter if you have that clearance there if you have nowhere for the oil to get out. If the side clearance on the rod is too tight, then the oil will not be able to flow out of that bearing. So it doesn't matter if you have four or five thou clearance, if the rods are too tight it won't come out. I like to have a minimum of 16 thou between them. Okay, you have your Moroso oil pan. The pickup on this pan is on the side, not in the stock position. Um, because of some of these stroker cranks and some of the combinations, you cannot use the stock location. This one has to be blocked off. So make sure that you don't have an open hole and make sure that you have a place where the dipstick can go. If your oil pan hasn't got a extra partition for it and when you put the dipstick in the stock location it hits the crank you're going to be pulling the crank you're going to be pulling the oil pan back off to resolve the problem this moroso has two different positions on the side rail to mount a dipstick so it's just a matter of putting the crank on putting the uh, pan on double check your clearance also on these dart blocks and it's a lot of these aftermarket blocks you, the main caps are so big and heavy that's a good idea before you start just to dry fit the pan and make sure that the main caps themselves don't need to be clearanced, especially in the back around the rear main seal. You'll have the timing cover on. You want to trim off anything that's sticking up. The gaskets are not cut exactly to length, so just trim them off if they're protruding into the main oil pan rail of the block. I like to use a little bit of uh, right stuff, gasket sealer, put a little bit across each one of those little gaps, a little bit in the corners of the oil pan, anywhere where you may have a little leak. Do that on all four corners and then in the groove around the where the pan contacts just a little bit of silicon in there just to make sure that the uh, pan where that rail compresses doesn't leak. You don't want to put any silicone on the inside edge. If you want to put any on the pan rail, put it to the outside so it doesn't squeeze into the engine and end up breaking off getting the pickup. These gaskets have a nice little tab so they don't slide around. They also have a steel spacer dowel at each bolt. So as the bolts tighten up, they don't just keep compressing the gasket. So you can tighten the bolts up so they don't come loose without over torquing the gasket. Put the gasket on, push it down on all those little corners, and then just on the front and back rail, put a coat of silicone on it, just a small bead toward the outside edge, and that will help seal 
that curve. All the bolts, once again, get a little red Loctite. You can use blue, doesn't really matter. Um, but most of the oil pans leak because they come loose. If you're using an oil pan anytime you're building a motor, where the bolts have tightened up before, it will actually collapse and you'll have a little bump right there. Just tap those down, actually tap them below the surface. Otherwise, when you put the pan on, it's going to tighten up on those high spots and not seal in between them. So just stick the pan against a bench, take a little ball peen hammer, and just tap those down. Of course, on a new pan, you don't have to worry about it. And then uh, go ahead and nip the corners down first, and then go through and tighten them all up. I use a speed wrench and do them by hand, rather than using an impact or anything else. So you can get a good feel of how it's coming down, and just, just kind of nip them all down as you go around, Get your corners down and then go through and tighten them up everything in between. Go round and round three or four times because they'll all relax a little bit as they go down and you should have a pretty dry motor. Now that you've got the bottom end of the motor pretty much sealed up, cams in, pistons in, oil pan on, now you're ready to uh, attack the top half of the motor. Anytime you do this, you've got to, once again, everything about putting these motors together is check fitting. 